வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ஸ்பைன் மோர் ஸ்பெசிஃபிகலி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி டிஸ்கசிங் த மசில்ஸ் தட் ஆர் ரெஸ்பான்சிபிள் ஃபார் மூமெண்ட் ஆஃப் த நெக் அண்ட் த ஹெட் அண்ட் மசில்ஸ் அட் த லெவல் ஆஃப் த நெக் அண்ட் த பேக் த ஹெட் in humans it is placed at the top of the vertebral column already i mentioned that is a special nature of the human head in terms of the heavier weight when compared with the body weight right? when compared with other animals the head of humans is bigger because they have a bigger uh, brain there is a purpose for this of course so this head will have to be supported and there is a very important constraint to maintain the level of the head at that level level so the head shouldn't fall like this it should be stabilized there are some constraints on the posture of the head and the neck very considered very critical for brain function for general function of the body the head is attached be mentioned where it is so the occipital bone at the level of the occiput there is attachment with the atlas which is the first cervical vertebra is it not with the atlas this joint is called as atlanto occipital joint we mentioned that so there is a very small amount of movement of flexion extension that is possible but mostly its purpose is to provide a receptacle or to provide a seat to hold the head in space it does not allow any other movement other than the small amount of flexion extension this joint does not allow for any other movement so the main purpose seems to be stabilizing the head right balancing the head so it is the head is stabilized or balanced moved and rotated movement lateral movement front back movement and rotation movement all are possible by the muscles that are present at the level of the neck right what are these muscles one muscle is called sternocleidomastoid right what is this muscle that is that muscle is it not right its uh, origin and insertion are as shown so attaches that right so its origin is at the sternum or clavicle and its insertion is the mastoid process in the temporal bone and the occipital bone so just below the ears right just at the level of the ear what is the purpose what is the uh, action of this uh, muscle it rotates and tilts the head to the side rotate and tilt to the side very important function you might wonder what is the purpose of this right uh, so when you tilt right you can tilt like this lateral movement is possible and you can also rotate like this but the sternocleidomastoid when it is contracting it has a purpose where you can rotate as well as tilt for example i am interested in looking backward on something that is on my right side like that i am interested in looking at rotate and tilt so i am my head is tilted at the same time it is rotated looking at that direction you also can look at the back like this so sternocleidomastoid can rotate and tilt the head to the side and also of course tilt the head to the forward direction so individually individually when each one of them is performing so there are two sides right the left side and the right side there are sternocleidomastoid uh, muscle on the left side and on the right side when both of them are acting together when both of them are acting together they perform flexion action but only when one of them is acting the other one is not activated at the same time then it rotates the head to the opposite side when this muscle is active that is the look that you are getting and when this muscle is active that is the look that you are getting 
right. Then you have the next muscle that is semispinalis capitis right? that is not clearly visible at the level of the neck. It is a deep muscle difficult for me to show in my body difficult for me to show right. It is a deep muscle of the neck because sternocleidomastoid is a muscle that I can show like this it is a superficial muscle right I can show superficial means something that is at the surface deep means something that is not at the surface something that is below other muscles that are difficult to access and show for example in this video right. Deep muscle one part of the semispinalis capitis is removed to show the other semispinalis cap capitis here is the right side of the semispinalis capitis that is shown right. right. What is the purpose? When only one of them is active its function is to laterally flex and rotate the head to the same side lateral flexion that lateral flexion right. Its origin is at the transverse and articular process of cervical and thoracic vertebra. So, it is starting at the level of cervical and thoracic vertebra and attaches to the occipital bone. So, attaches to the head right. It is a deep muscle and uh, the function is to rotate and tilt the head backwards. So, when that muscle is active. So, this is a muscle that is at the back of the head at that neck deep inside. So, you cannot see it at the surface it is deep inside but at the back of the neck. So, when that muscle is contracting I will be able to do that action right head rotate the head backward rotates and tilts the head backward like that right that function. Then splenius capitis this again you know starts at the level of cervical and thoracic vertebra origin is at the level of cervical and the thoracic vertebra and attachment or insertion is at the level of temporal bone of the and occipital bone right. temporal bone means mastoid process right. let us go back and uh, check this splenius capitis right that is that muscle right. that muscle or uh, here it is shown here right relatively small muscle unlike the sternocleidomastoid this is relatively difficult to find, but it is still uh, not a very deep muscle ok. Yes. What is the purpose? What is the function? The function is rotates and tilts head to the side and tilts the head backward. So, one function is performed by more than one muscle. This is not new to us right. For example, we saw in the case of elbow flexion brachialis, brachioradialis, biceps all of them perform the same function right elbow flexion. And individually when they work only one side when it is active laterally flexes and rotates the head to the same side when both of them are active it extends the head right. Then you have longismus capitis, longismus capitis it is uh, again origin is cervical and thoracic vertebra at the transverse and articular process. Insertion is also approximately the same location at the temporal uh, bone which is uh, this muscle is it not deep muscle somewhat difficult to identify deep muscle longest muscle capitis this one right that muscle is relatively hard to identify from the surface. Right? What is the purpose? What is the action? Individually lateral flexion and rotates the head to the same side and when both of them are active extension of the head right. So, the movement is rotates and tilts the head to the side and tilts the head backward that is the function of this longismus capitis. So, these are the muscles that are responsible for movement at the level of the neck or movement of the head turns out that this has a very important evolutionary purpose is it not. If uh, or when we were hunters and gatherers, when we were hunters and gatherers, if a predator animal is coming, 
is approaching and you are hearing some noise that a predator animal is approaching, you will have to turn back and look in various directions and accordingly take action. So, a very important function and, and a crucial advantage for humans is that they are able to stand about 6 feet tall and with their vision able to see any approaching predator in the savanna, in the grassland. When the approaching predator is coming, you are in a position to view from a relatively tall, uh, from a relatively higher elevation, right. You are able to get that vision and that head, which is why balancing and viewing of that head in various directions becomes absolutely crucial for survival because if you do not look in the direction of the predator, it is likely that you will be taken out. Right? So, crucial evolutionary function of head movement in this. Then you have the large muscle or the group of muscles or the set of all muscles that together constitute the so called erector spinae group of muscles. Right. This is not a single muscle, this is the muscle that is found in the back, it is a large muscle or large set of muscles however we want to call this. This is essentially what constitutes the back, the so called muscle mass at the back is provided for by this single muscle or group of muscles called erector spinae. Okay. What is the function? Extensor of the vertebral column doing that, but that is not the only function, there are many different small uh, things that each one of this sub component of this erector spinae does, which we will see in some level of detail, right. Also, it is responsible for control of other movements such as flexion, lateral flexion and rotation. So, flexion at the elbow, flexion at the elbow, lateral flexion and rotation. All of this are possible to be controlled by co-activation of the corresponding erector spinae mus muscle or that part of the erector spinae muscle on the other side, right? something to keep in mind. It can be divided into three broad groups, right? Iliocostalis group, longismus group and spinalis group. The iliocostalis group is the group that is placed most laterally, you see that one, iliocostalis. At the level of the neck is called as iliocostalis services, at the level of the thorax it is called iliocostalis thoracis and then at the level, at the level of uh, the lumbar uh, vertebra it is called as iliocostalis lumborum. Those that are present most lateral from the axis are called iliocastalis group, okay. And those that are present at the level of the neck are called iliocastalis surfaces. Those that are present at the level of the thorax is called iliocastalis thoracis. At the level of the lumbar vertebra or the lumbar region, they are, they are called iliocastalis lumborum, right. Those that are present slightly more medially when compared with the iliocostalis, but not at the most medial level or at the uh, intermediate level between most medial and the most lateral are called longismus group. Already we saw one of these muscles that is the longismus capitis, right. This longismus capitis is at the level of the head you have this longismus capitis at the level of the head. Then at the level of the neck you have the, at the level of the neck you have longismus cervices. Then at the level of the thorax you have longismus thoracis. Okay. Then you have the muscles that are most medially located, okay. These muscles constitute the spinalis group. This is at the level of the spine, right. These are not longismus capitis, longismus services and longismus thoracis, but rather spinalis capitis, spinalis, there is a little mistake in this, that is okay, we will correct this. Spinalis capitis, spinalis services and spinalis thoracis, right. 
the capitis is located at the level of the head, cervices is located at the level of the neck and thoracis is located at the level of the thorax. So, the most medial one for example is the spinalis muscle and at the level of the thorax is called spinalis thoracis. Right? The intermediate one at the level of the neck is called longismus cervices. So, let us review this. Those that are located most lateral are called iliocostalis. Those that are located at an intermediate level in this in the medial lateral direction, those that are located intermediate intermediately between medial and lateral are called as longismus group and those that are located closest to the spine or most medial is called spinalis group. Those that are located at the level of the neck are, are always called cervices, those that are located at the level of the thorax are called thoraces. Those that are located at the level of the, at the, level of the lumbar region are called lumborum. This is possible only, this is uh, applicable only at the level of iliocostalis. Intermediate and uh, intermediate and uh, the spinalis or uh, longismus and spinalis, intermediate and the most medial uh, muscles are called longismus and spinalis. Those that are located at the level of the head are called capitis. Those that are located at the level of the neck are called cervices and those that are located at the level of the thorax are called thoraces. So, which is how we are getting these names. Okay. Remember that in the third group it is spinalis capitis, spinalis cervices and spinalis thoraces. These are the various muscles that together constitute the erector spinae group the largest muscle and those that form the muscle mass at the back, right, muscle mass at the back. Right. So, uh, with this we come to the end of this video. So, in this video we saw muscles that move the head and muscles that are present at the neck and the back which is the and in particular we looked at some good detail about the various sub parts of the erector spinae group. Thank you very much for your attention.